We're going to be looking at Isaiah chapter 45. We notice at Proverbs chapter 16, verse 4, that the Lord, he makes the wicked. But that is easily debunked by showing that it doesn't get rid of free will. It's free will first, and then the Lord makes it ultimately happen for his glory, whatever free choice you make. The thing is this, though, is that if God is not the author of evil, then what are we going to do with Isaiah chapter 45? We're going to look at Isaiah chapter 45, and you're going to notice right here that God, he actually creates darkness and he creates evil. So there's no way that you can go against that one. It's like a big problem right here for Christians who are against Calvinism. He creates evil and he creates darkness. Look at verse 7. I, <coughs> excuse me. I form the light and create what? Darkness. But darkness is not good. I make peace and create what? Evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. We got a problem here. We insist that the Lord, he's not the author of sin. He's not the creation of evil. We believe that's man, free choice, and will. And we debunk Proverbs 16.4 by showing man's free choice and will did it first, the sin. And then the Lord, what? He makes it ultimately for his glory at the end. But then you got a problem here. Even though we can debunk Proverbs 16.4, it seems to go hand in hand with Isaiah chapter 45, verse 7, that God, he creates sin. He creates evil. Now, do you know how to debunk this one? You have to know just basic, easy English. <laughs> just basic, easy English. So there are Calvinists that go all over the floor philosophically with complicated arguments just because you got this one. But here's the thing. What is sin? See that? What is sin? By the way, before I define that, let me add more problems right here to support the Calvinists. He created the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. What are you going to do with that one? So God, he did create evil. Not only that, the Lord, he created hell. What are you going to do about that one? So... You can see right here, including Isaiah chapter 45, verse 7, the Lord, he creates evil. He creates sin. Now, basic, easy English. What counts as sin? Do you know what counts as sin? It's not an object. It's the action. That's what counts as sin. When God put the tree of the knowledge of good and evil on the earth, sin did not automatically pass all over the world and corrupted the planet. You know why? This is an object. Sin did not burst forth and corrupt the world until there was a certain action where a man and woman deliberately disobeyed God, put the fruit on, in their mouth. That action was sin, and because of that, sin corrupted the whole planet. When God created hell in the center of the earth, that did not corrupt the whole world where all of the world was corrupted by sin. It wasn't until the action of mankind that the whole world was corrupted by sin. Here's another thing. God created Lucifer. But guess what? Lucifer, he was a perfect, beautiful being. It wasn't until the action, again, the action where he committed pride, then he became evil. He became Satan. He became the tempter. He became the wicked being, that wicked one, as the book, as the book in the New Testament said. So you'll notice right here, sin is defined by its action, not by the object. Why in the world would, would the Lord create this? So he did not create sin then. Sin is not the correct word. Did Isaiah 45, Proverbs 16, tree of knowledge of good and evil, hell and Lucifer, did it define itself as sin? Or is it evil, Isaiah chapter 45 stated? It's evil. Not sin. It's evil. Why did God create the evil object? He created the evil object, why? He created that evil object for actually good, not sin. 
So actually, this is something to pay attention. This is a strong argument against Calvinism. When God created evil, that actually proves more that he's the author of good and not the author of sin. You might say, why? I don't get it, Pastor. No, it's simple to understand. For example, you can have some, some bad drugs like heroin where that's evil, but then the government agencies they actually implanted that heroin, created that heroin, why? So that they can use that to catch the drug dealers. So that they can use that to imprison and to record and have evidences of drug dealing going on when they instigate the setup and organize the setup with evil criminals. The Lord created evil, government forces did that evil, why? To fulfill a good purpose not a sinful purpose you know why the lord created hell for a good purpose people who sin against him they can't go to heaven they should what lock up in hell that's a good thing that's not an evil thing that's a good thing because god can't allow sin contaminate the universe so he has to create hell where sin is locked up in see that's a very good purpose so you got to realize this, is that when God creates evil, it's not making him the author of sin, but the author of good. Because he created those things, because why? To fulfill a good purpose, a good cause. That's why. Makes him more good and more holy. If you say he's the author of sin, where he made a person disobey God, made Adam and Eve pick the fruit off the tree, made Satan fall in pride, then you know what? That is definitely not a good purpose right there. That is not a good cause and good action right there. That is evil. That is insane. That is a wicked God. And that's the God of Calvinism. You got to understand. That's the God of Calvinism. Wicked and evil. By the way, look at Jeremiah 19. Here's a powerful argument. Didn't you know this verse I would definitely mark down. This would be very good against this argument. By the way, when you look at Jeremiah chapter 19, <laughs> didn't you know God can create evil, but he does not even think or he has absolutely no connection to sin whatsoever? Didn't you know that? Look at Jeremiah 19 if you don't believe me. Jeremiah chapter 19. And look verse 3. Let's start with verse 3 and we'll finish at verse 5. And we'll call it an evening. And say, Hear ye the word of the Lord, O kings of Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel. Behold, I will bring what? Evil upon this place. Why? For a good purpose. Why? Because to punish the wickedness of the children of Israel. The which, whiso uh, the which whosoever heareth his ears shall tingle. Because they have forsaken me and have estranged this place and have burned incense in it unto other gods. So you'll notice right here, because of all of these sins the children of Israel committed, the Lord, he does it for a good purpose, bringing evil upon them. Rightly so. They have to be judged. They have to be punished for that. But keep reading right here. These sins that the children of Israel committed, whom neither they, <clears throat> whom neither they nor their fathers have known, nor the kings of Judah, and have filled this place with the blood of innocence. <clears throat> so there's a slaughter of innocent children as well. Look at verse 5. They have built, built also the high places of Baal to burn their sons with fire for burnt offerings unto Baal, which I what? Commanded not. He did not ordain it. Nor what? Spake it. He didn't even say it. Neither what? Came it into my mind. He didn't even think about that sin. That's a powerful verse. A powerful verse that God creates evil, but has absolutely nothing to do with sin. So you'll see right here, Calvinism falls completely apart with this simple passage right here. You've got to realize this. God, he creates evil, yes. But he is not the creator, the author of sin itself. Sin is defined by its action. You got to understand. That action, God counts as sin. And then Jeremiah chapter 19, verse 3 through 5, he created evil not to commit a sin, not for a sinful cause, but for a good and holy cause. Right there. 